Can we build a location based AR experience using WebXR? Yes, we can. I'm unsure if you've seen this already, but Immerse's VPS technology can now be integrated inside Metacraft, which is a tool that we can use to develop WebXR experiences. This means we can develop all sorts of AR experiences like navigating complex areas or creating interactive games in your local park or developing industry content like overlaying BIM models or even creating some IoT based AR application. In today's video, we'll see how to create a basic AR pathfinding experience for WebXR using Zapworks Metacraft tool and Immersal's VPS integration. At the end of this video, I'll also show you how you can get the source code and use it for your project. Now this video is sponsored by Immersal in collaboration with Zappar. For those of you who don't know Immersal, it's a company that develops technology like spatial mapping and visual positioning system that allows developers like us to create some cool AR experiences. Before we start developing, there are some pre requisites that you'll have to meet. I'll give you an overview, but if you want to know in more detail, then you can check out our previous videos linked over here. First, you'll need the Immersal's developer account. It's free and creating one is really simple. You can find the link in the description below. The free plan has limited features, but it's just enough for prototyping and testing. On the other hand, the pro version gives you some extra features like increased image limit, allowing you to capture bigger spaces and in more detail. Now this is very much required for creating AR wayfinding application. It unlocks other features like spatial map editing, polycam mapping support, etc. So Immersal was kind enough to give us one month of pro license for free until the Jan 31st of 2025 and I can share it with you as well. So once you have your developers account, click on plans and pricings, select pro monthly, use this coupon called Immersive Insiders and click on apply. Fill in your details and submit. Next, to map your environment, you need to download the Immersal's Mapper app from Play Store or App Store. Then, you can use this app to map your physical environment. It's as simple as clicking a bunch of pictures from different angles and uploading it to the Immersal server. The backend does all the heavy lifting of finding the feature points in your environment, which you will use later on for placing augmented content. The process of how to map your environment is well documented and you can find the link for that in the description below. Now there's one thing that you should know and that is you will have to use manual mode to capture your environment because only with manual mode it will be able to generate a mesh of your environment which is a requirement for building this experience. Alright, once you have met the prerequisites, we can start to develop the web application. And to do that, the tool that we'll be using today is Metacraft. For those of you who don't know Metacraft, it's an immersive 3D web-based developer tool that allows us to build AR application for mobile devices, WebXR application for headsets such as Apple Vision Pro, MetaQuest and others. And this tool allows us to create 3D website as well. Also, if you check out the Metacraft page, you'll see that it has a bunch of features like instant live preview, real-time physics, particle effects. And the best part, experiences built using this tool can be accessed via any device's web browser. All right, now we can head to the Zapworks website. Now, if you're here for the first time, you'll have to create a new account. You get a 14 days free trial. And after that, you can opt in for a developer's plan, which is pretty cheap to continue accessing this tool. Create a new project and select Metacraft as the project type. Give your project a name. You can upload an image here if you want to and click on open Metacraft. Now when this tool opens, you'll get a window where you can select the template. So we want to select Immersal VPS, select Immersal blank template and click on get started and wait for the dependencies to get installed. Once your project opens, on the right hand side inside the hierarchy window, you'll be able to see a bunch of components like the Zap AR camera, which is going to be the camera of your device and the Immersal anchor group. Now this component will be used to communicate with Immersal and load your 3D map, but it requires a developer token and a map ID. So to get this, you need to visit the Immersal's developer portal, click on menu, select account, copy your developer token, go back inside Metacraft, paste it over here. And once again, go back to the developers portal, click on menu, Click on Maps, copy the ID of the map that you'd like to download, go back inside Metacraft and paste this inside Map ID and click on Enter. After a couple of seconds, you should be able to see the mesh of your environment. I know this mesh isn't perfect, but since this is a demo, I can still use this to show you how it's done. Since I was trying to map a part of a mall with a lot of people around, I had to do it quickly. But make sure to map your environment perfectly. 
All right, now the next step is to add the target locations. For this, you can import any 3D model or use the primitives like a cube and hide it. Now, if you choose to import any 3D model, then remember that GLB is the only supported file format. For now, I'll be making use of the 3D primitive like cube and hiding it. Now, since we have one cube here already, I'm going to place one over here and rename this as target location one. Then I can duplicate this. Select the target location 2 and place it somewhere else, probably somewhere over here. Now once you have fixed your target location, you can select both the objects and uncheck its visibility to hide them. Next, we can create some UI that allows us to choose these locations. And for that, you can download this style sheet and import it inside your project. Now this style sheet allows us to quickly create and organize UI buttons. I got this from George who is a product manager at Zappar. So thanks to George for sharing this with us. And now to create the UI buttons, go back inside your scene and inside the group, we can create a new HTML component. Then select the style CSS file and drag and drop it inside the HTML component. Next, to create a dev component as a child of HTML, you can click on these three dots, click on new and select dev and rename this as footer container. Next, in the node properties, we need to create a class list called as footer container and make sure that the f is small because we want to match this name with our style sheet. Then from the display drop down, select flex, scroll down and set the width as 100 but not pixel. Instead, we want to select as viewport width. Now for this app, we want to anchor everything at the bottom. So for that, you can select HTML, scroll down and set the vertical anchor as bottom. All right, now we can create UI buttons as a child of footer container. So for that, we can create a new div, rename this as location one, set the class list as footer item, set the display to inline block and set the size as 20 VW. Now inside this location, we can add an image, add a class list called IMG and you can leave the rest of the settings as is. Similarly, we can create a text of type H2, set the class list as text and write the text for your button. So now if you click on location one, this whole thing is going to be your button. Now since we have two location, I'm just going to duplicate this, click on paste and it's going to create another button called location two. Now, since we have this style sheet here, it automatically spaces them equally. So for example, if you have more location, you can duplicate this again. And now you see they're equally spaced. All right, so for now, I'm going to keep it really simple. I just going to have two location and I don't have any images as well. So I'm going to delete the location three. I'm going to rename the location to heading as location two. And now if you want to add images, first you'll have to add them inside your project and you can drag and drop it inside the source over here. But for now, I'm just going to delete them. All right, now the next step is to add a 3D model of a pointer that will point us in the direction of the target location. For that, you can download any arrow model or you can get this one from the link in the description below. Add it to your project, then create a new component by navigating inside new transforms and select camera transform and inside this camera transform we need to add a look at node component and inside this look at component we can add this arrow model now if we check out the look at node component here we can set the target and based on the target selected the arrow is going to point in that direction however as you can see the direction in which it is pointing is wrong and to fix it you can select the arrow 3d model scroll down and set the rotation as 90 around the x-axis. So now all that's left to do is for us to change the target based on the UI button pressed here. So let's first remove the target and hide the look at component. Then we can open the animation window and create a new layer. Give your layer a name and inside the layer you can create a new state. Let's call this state as look at location one. Then select the look at location one state and from the nodal properties, we want to set a target and set the target as location one. Also at the same time, we want to set the visibility to true. Then we can add one more state to this layer and call it as look at location two. Then select this new state, add a target and set it as location two. Also make sure to set the visibility to true here as well. Then you can close the animation window, open HTML, select the first UI button, which is location one, Click on the plus symbol under behaviors and navigate inside animation action and select activate state. Now in the event, we can select on click and the state that we want to activate is going to be inside the switch location layer 
and select look at location 1. Similarly, select location 2. Click on the plus symbol inside behaviors. Navigate inside animation action. Select activate state. The event is going to be on click. And this time we want to select switch location. Look at location 2. And that's about it. Now you can quickly test this scene by clicking on live preview. Make sure to save all the changes and scan this QR code using your mobile device. Wait for it to connect and then launch the experience. If prompted, give the permission to access the camera. Then move around and wait for it to localize. While you move around, you will be able to see the point clouds. And after successful localization, the prompt and the point cloud will disappear. Now, when I select location 1, it points me in the right direction. And then when I select the location 2, it changes its orientation to point me in the direction of the location 2. Once you're done testing it and you're satisfied with your experience, you can go ahead and publish it. Once your project has been successfully published, you can go inside the Zapwork projects, download the QR code from here and share it with others. And when they are in the same location, they can scan the environment and they'll be able to see your AR experience. Also, as this experience is web-based, it'll work on both iOS and Android devices. Alright, so now you know how to make location-based WebXR experiences. To make your life easier, you can download this project from the link below and build on top of it, modify it or even use this as a reference. Now to use this project, unzip the downloaded files, then open a new Mattercraft project, click on open project from your computer and select the unzipped folder. Once again, wait for the dependencies to get installed. And just like that, you have a base project. Alright, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.